Cameron Rapper made Questure one of the top selling cigars, premium cigars in the 60s and the 70s. It's interesting, all the premium cigars made in the United States were made in Tampa. Everybody had a 26 cent palm, six and four inches, 42 ring. Barry had it, Went they had it, Gold Label had it, Garcia Vega had it, Fecta Garcia had it, Cuesta Ray had it. So my father had the opportunity to buy this Cameroon tobacco wrapper, very expensive. He couldn't make money at 26 cents. My father came up with an idea. Just like my grandfather was innovative, my father was innovative as well. My father came up with an idea. Let's pack it like a Cuban packing. Round cigars, not pressed. Put two bundles of 25 in a box, a box of 50. All the Palma cigars from Tampa were made in a kind of cardboard box. My father said, let's make it richer. Let's make it with first cedar to get to the redwood, fancy package. So we had a fancy package, Cameron wrapper, round cigar. Where everybody else was getting 26 cents on their Palma shape, my father got 35 cents. And that was at Quest Trade 95. And it was a quite successful cigar. The 70s and 80s was a tough time. But again, my grandfather was innovative. He came up with glass cigars sold in packs to drugstores like Walgreens, Eckers. And my father came with an idea to use a, put three cigars in the pack, not make cheap cardboard, put in gold foil pack, make it grittier. The boxes were fancier, redwood versus cardboard. The packs were fast, were fancier. The picture of our Quest 95 was made in foil. Ritzy, the connotation you have a 26 cent cigar, you have something even better. It was tough in the 70s and the 80s because all of a sudden imported handmade cigars started appearing from third world low wage countries, the Nick Republic, Honduras, Nicaragua. In fact, it was cheaper for us to buy a cigar than it was to make a cigar in Tampa. And the market was going import handmade. People wanted imported products in the 70s and 80s, whether it's imported cars, imported shoes, imported clothes, imported everything, imported cigars. So it was hard for us to compete. My father came up with an idea. Let's run ads and sample cigars, advertise it in New York Times Magazine, also Wall Street Journal, Sports Illustrated, Esquire, a lot of newspapers around the country where a customer would send in a dollar, you get a free pack of cigars, or you get a, buy a pack of cigars, get a free trolley man's humidor. We put these ads in newspapers all over the country and magazines to help make Quest Array a good, a top selling premium cigar. Still, we we're almost going against the uh, wind, the, the winds of, of uh, what the marketplace wanted, import handmade. So the market went imported, we're making cigars in Tampa. So we made we we tell try to change the name of our company from Quest Trade Tampa, Quest Trade International. You put imported stickers, try to give an imported uh, panache on it. We tried ran advertising campaigns. It's a pledge of quality for three generations. That quite didn't, didn't, didn't work. We have a revolution in the cigar industry. What did that mean? At that time, all the mass market brands were converting from tobacco to homogenized wrapper, kind of like paper type of tobacco. And so we said, we aren't gonna do it, we're still gonna keep, in this case, Rigoletto, keep tobacco on our products. But it was still tough in the 70s, in the early 80s, as the market shifted. We were the last Tampa factory, still trying to make Tampa cigars, long filler cigars, premium cigars, when the market was going to import it and made, and it was, it was difficult to buck this trend.